Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts, mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Pyramids of Giza, the Great Pyramid, Giza Pyramid Complex, Great Pyramid of Giza, ask its explanations, part 5. You wonder about the age of the pyramid. In truth, its history is somewhat confused, because its origins lead back to very early times. Were I to tell them to you now, their meaning and the history of its origin would lead much too far. So I will only tell you the required data, according to which you can form a picture for yourself. This, and also a few other pyramids on the earth, was constructed when the constellation of Lyra Lyra, explanation of September 4th, 1975, was positioned in the sign of Cancer. That results in a time span of 2x36,650 years and therefore 73,300 years in total. You must calculate 2x36,650 years back from the time of the Hegira in order for you to obtain the correct figure. Until shortly before the Great Deluge, about 9,545 BC, the pyramids here in this land remained abandoned to their fate and nobody bothered any more about them. But they acquired a significance again 300 years before the deluge, even if not in their original sense, which unfortunately, for many kinds of reasons, may not be named. But it still has to be explained that the erroneous assumptions of all of the Earth scientists about the time of the Arc deluge are just as very wrong, by umpteen thousands of years, as are the erroneous calculations to which they have succumbed about the times of various kings and emperors who lived thousands of years ago. The actual time, which was handed down to you, earthlings, of the deluge of the Ark, is also greatly falsified because it occurred nearly 100,000 years ago and therefore must be calculated to be very much earlier than the lifetime of King Saluk, who had taken over an important role in regard to the pyramids. King Salak lived about 300 years before the Great Deluge. He had a son named Saurid, who in large measure had the ability to see into the future. In this way, in a dream, he saw a great comet which pulled along seven smaller comets behind it, which collided with the earth with terrible roaring sounds, whereby darkness came upon the world. Thorid saw countless humans die because of that, because they were killed by the seven impacting comets. The few survivors did not know where they could save, themselves in order to escape a hail of projectiles from outer space, which accompanied the catastrophe, as well as the resulting stinking and hot bodies of water. Thorid reported his bad dream to his father, who summoned all the astrologers and scientists in the land. By means of difficult work and written records, they found out that, in the course of 300 years, a gigantic comet would fall to Earth, throwing it out of its orbit and turning it in its course. In order to keep from having the survival of a terrestrial humanity put into question by this expected catastrophe, King Salak ordered that the already existing pyramids be prepared as protection stations and survival stations for the humans of the still distant future. He also directed that underground villages and stores of goods be established and non-perishable food be stowed in the pyramids and underground villages. His descendants, as well as the later rulers of the land, also were faithful to these directions. Over the following 300 years, the pyramids were maintained and also their outer sides were covered with very thick layers of lime in order to keep the water out. In the writing of that time, they also fabricated signs in the layer of lime which told of the coming events so that they would not be forgotten by anybody. When the gigantic comet actually came which penetrated this universe and the solar system from another space-time configuration and is still today named the destroyer by many life forms. 
the humans made their way to the pyramids and underground villages and shut themselves into them. The comet turned the earth, flooded it with all the bodies of water and destroyed and annihilated everything which was at its mercy. Only a few masses of humans and animals of all kinds survived without the constructions for their protection and once again earth humanity had to find a new start after this catastrophe, as had already repeatedly been the case in earlier times. Originally, the pyramids and their construction lead back to the sons of heaven, those who travel among the stars, those who were actually the original settlers of this world. Contact Report 031 On the World Neighbor The reason is that two different human races from two different galaxies had established research bases on the planet and lived there during many years and explored this world. As on Earth, they built pyramids and were thus protected by solid walls from the hostile and rampant environment. Contact Report 052 When the pyramids were built, the astronomers at that time were already calculating the further fate of the Earth. According to the data derived from that, the measurements of the pyramids were worked out. The calculations revealed that many thousands of years in the future, a catastrophe would once again threaten the Earth from the cosmos, like at the time of the construction of the pyramids. For indicating the impending catastrophe to the Earth's inhabitants of later millennia, the obtained measurement data of astronomical nature of the distant future was therefore built into the pyramids. That means that they were constructed according to the data and measurements, which will precisely then match with the astronomical data when the catastrophe from space begins to loom anew. Astronomy was very capable in those days and thus calculated the dates very precisely. They even observed several world crashes in their calculations and were able to calculate the dates with extremely accurate precision in that manner. As pre-calculated, the Earth did then actually crash and proved the science of those days, meanwhile, long gone, to be right. And now the time is slowly fulfilling, since the astronomical measurement data which, as explained, served and were decisive for the construction of the pyramids, are gradually corresponding with the astronomical values of the present time and announcing the thus more than 70,000 years ago prophesied happening. And that occurrence will precisely be then, when the sunlight of a faraway star passes through the tube-like opening of the revelation, which stretches from outside the Giza pyramid to the center, in a straight, uninterrupted line, and illuminates a particular point. I am not allowed to explain more about it, but now how about certain secrets, claimed to have grown up around the pyramids? And how had they been built, perhaps with machines? There are no actual secrets to be mentioned, besides these of the existence of the Giza intelligences, as well as the issues around the measurement data in the context of the looming danger and the issue of the starlight, which will shine at the given time through the opening of the revelation. The pyramids were not built by telekinetic spiritual forces, as certain earthly fantasists claim, but through tried and tested techniques, as you, however, already know, so I need no more to tell about it. Contact Report 127 Is it right that the total number of elements is 280? How did you come across this result? It was not me, my child, but Guido. For my part, I have only calculated that this number must, indeed, correspond to the correctness because it has been found that this number, multiplied in a sevenfold form with the original height of the Giza pyramid, results in the current speed of light to the tenths place exactly. You are simply unbelievable. The number of the elements is just as correct as also your calculation with the sevenfold multiplying of the original pyramid height. The end result actually yields the exact number of the present light constant. 
How Guido actually came across the number 280, that I do not know exactly. He only wrote me a calculation formula. It is important there, however, that the base number 280 is right, with which I could calculate further and do some checks. So I simply applied the pyramid height number to this 280, and then multiplied the result in a unique sevenfold form, from which then the result of the speed of light arose. You should not make these results known too much yet, however. You mean that I should remain silent about it? Sure, at least about the numerical values of the real original pyramid height. Up to now, this is still unknown to the terrestrial scientists of certain fields of knowledge, and it would not be good if they would get to know these already now. In two to three years, however, to make this number known will not play a large role anymore. Until then, however, you should be careful. So far, those who deal with these things reckon with completely incorrect data regarding the pyramid height, resulting in false conclusions and new, incorrect results. Sure, but all these things are much more widely branching than you might imagine at the moment. The data of the pyramid extend into physics and into many other sciences. And these data provide basic formulas for very specific calculations, which lead to tremendous inventions of all kinds and to enormous progress. But if these inventions and progress would already be initiated now by revealing the true data, then the determined path of evolution would be disturbed, by which means an even very much greater catastrophe would be triggered on Earth by the human beings of Earth than what might be the case in the coming future. The mentioning of the true data would lead to calculations and insights that would point the terrestrial sciences to ways and possibilities, of which they are not yet master and which could, therefore, only end in a hopeless catastrophe. Contact Report 150 The Moon, the former planetary fragment, already joined the Earth as a satellite a few million years ago while the much slower destroyer that followed it first entered the SOL system about 970,000 years ago, causing a tremendous Earth catastrophe. A large part of the Earth humans at that time, however, found protection and survival because they had been warned by our ancestors regarding the coming of the destroyer and the impending disasters. Consequently, they built themselves structures like the pyramids and also other shelters. Contact Report 155 Another question about this. Here, you have only given me the primary data. Therefore, there still should have been other incidents of lesser importance. That is of correctness. But on the one hand, they really are not very important. And on the other hand, they are part of a much earlier history, such as the destruction of the planet Malone, over which you are oriented and have also received information about it. The Earth was also slightly affected at that time when this inhabited planet exploded, having been destroyed by human hands. When was that anyway? At the time of the building of the pyramids, so about 73,000 years ago. Contact Report 215 But tell me, what is actually going on now with what you told me about the building of the pyramids? Namely that human powers, respectively human muscle power, had accomplished the building of the pyramids. Years ago, I was told that telekinetic forces had been in play, by which means the large cubes should have been moved through the air by thought, respectively consciousness powers which are and have always been mistakenly referred to as mental powers. But now you have said something else. How does that reconcile itself? My recently given explanation is just as correct as that which you were given a few years ago. Both recently as well as before, you only asked for a certain explanation, but not for one that should be complete. So now, however, I will explain to you that both human muscle power which accomplished most of the work, as well as telekinetic powers were used in the building of the pyramids. 
The human muscle power was used by the human beings of the earth, who worked on the building, while the telekinetic powers were used by the foreigners from the star systems Orion and Leo. And of these foreigners, however, only a few had powerful telekinetic powers. Thus, only small works were settled in this manner. Contact Report 222 Then I once again have a question regarding the Egyptian pyramids, as I was also asked about them. Unfortunately, I no longer remember exactly what Ptah, Simya say, and ask it explained to me, but somehow, I think it was said to me that the first pyramids were built around 73,300 years ago or so, but later dismantled again because they fell to decay namely through rotting in the interior as well as through the weather. In particular, this refers to the pyramids of Giza, but also to many other pyramids all over the world. Afterwards, everything was rebuilt, which should have happened around 10,800 or 11,000 years ago. At this time, about 300 years before the Great Flood, a certain King Salak was the person of power, who ordered the dismantling and alteration of the Great Pyramid of Giza and allowed this to be carried out. But again, everything moldered over the course of the following millennia and fell to decay. So about 4,500 years ago, an enormous pyramid work resulted once more, as everything that was moldering and decaying was torn away, removed, and replaced. Thus, accordingly, new stone blocks were cut and then dragged and set up by human power. At the same time, the main pyramid completely lost its internal structure and organization, and it was built anew under the strict power of Chaos and completely revamped. Therefore, one can very well say that the current Pyramid of Giza can actually also be called the Pyramid of Chaos, even though its actual origin traces back to other and partly Earth-foreign builders from the constellation of Orion, and indeed, to a time of two stellar ages ago, one of which is reckoned as around 36,650 years, and thus, in a two times form, yields a time of 73,300 years, whereby this time must be set before the Islamic Hegira, however. And when we speak of the Pyramid of Giza, we always speak of the pyramid that must be seen as the original pyramid, even if today, the new production is addressed, which is, of course, already about 4,500 years old, and is exposed to rotting and decay and which also no longer exhibits its original measure of 152.5 meters in height, but only 146 or 148 meters. This great pyramid, together with the others, is aligned in its formatting to the constellation of Orion, while the Khafra structure, I mean the Sphinx structure, was aligned to the constellation of Leo. The new pyramid, as well as all the others and the Sphinx structure, were built in more recent times, so about 4,500 years ago, solely by Earth humans, by their own personnel. The builders were early Egyptians, like also the largest part of the workers, who were free people and artisans to a certain part, while many others, who came in small numbers as slaves from other countries, had to perform their hard work, together with a small number of domestic slaves. That majority of the workers, however, was based on free Egyptians. For the purpose of the nourishment of all workforces, a veritable industrial food city was built near the pyramid, and also mass campsites were provided for resting and sleeping, as well as tombs for the many deceased who were at work there. That is how I remember it being explained to me by you. Now, is this right or did I fall into a fallacy? Everything is of correctness, so therefore, no further explanation is necessary. Contact Report 228 Beyond Pluto's orbit, there are also two different belts of comets and wandering planets, many of which enter the inner solar system at regular, periodic, and also sporadic intervals. The first belt, a zone, is measured from the Sun to more than 150,000 astronomical units away. One astronomical unit corresponds to the average distance from the Sun to the Earth, that is to say, 149,597,870 kilometers. In earlier times, when the pyramids of Giza were built, this distance was 152.5 million kilometers, 
a figure that is also of enormous importance in relation to the calculation of the total universal 280 elements. Contact Report 246 You once explained to me that in the entire universe there 280 elements existed, after Guidu came across them through calculations. I then calculated that the original pyramid height of the Pyramid of Giza was 152.955347 meters, which you confirmed to me. You also said that today's height of about 136.8 meters was due to the fact that the ancient Egyptians, etc., had removed so much material from the pyramid that it had shrunk so much. Well, Earthly scientists claim that the Great Pyramid of Giza originally had a height of 146.6 meters, but according to my calculations and your statements, this does not correspond to the truth. The original height was actually 152.955347 meters, which was renamed in kilometers and corresponds exactly to the distance Earth-Sun, and thus to an AE, an astronomical unit. A fact which contradicts the inaccurate distance indication of Earth-Sun by Earth astronomic science. Interesting is now the further computation, which I made at that time, namely that from the exact pyramid height and or from the exact distance Earth-Sun, and with the number of the total elements of 280 that today's and very exact speed of light can be calculated, if one consults the multiplication factor, the calculation then reads as follows. 280x7 or 1960x152.955347 299792.488012. So the end result is today's speed of light, which is 299,792.488012 kilometers per second. At that time, I was not allowed to publish this calculation, nor the exact number of elements. The question is now whether these calculations made by me must still be subject to secrecy or whether one may speak openly about it now. There are no more reasons for further secrecy. Contact Report 256 I would like to ask you something about the pyramids, which cannot only be found in Egypt, but around the world. Askit told me during her time that these were originally created under the direction of extraterrestrials. She explained at that time, 1956, that the pyramids were built two times 36,650 years ago, and therefore thus 73,300 years ago. Since then, 40 years have passed, so the time of origin of the pyramids must have been 73,340 years ago. But it is precisely in this respect that our scientists claim something else, because they set the time of construction as much later, that is just a few millennia before the birth of Emmanuel. I am aware of this misrepresentation and miscalculation. If you calculate from the present time, the pyramids were indeed built about 73,340 years ago, and actually not just those in Egypt, but all around the Earth, which at that time had a distance to the sun of 152.5 million kilometers. The pyramids were covered with a dense layer of limestone and lime mortar in the exterior form and were therefore also higher than they are today. So the Great Cheops Pyramid measured 152.5 meters in height at that time, which corresponds to one meter per one million kilometers of Earth-Sun distance. But these exterior layers were removed again in the course of the millennia as well as parts of the pyramids themselves, and specifically by weathering on the one hand, and by the human beings who used the material to construct other buildings, etc., on the other hand. The purpose of the pyramids also underwent changes from time to time, and in the end, they were used as grave sites as well as otherwise also as cultic temples. Originally, the pyramid buildings as well as the subterranean rooms that were often connected with them, were built under the direction of human beings who were of extraterrestrial origin and who at that time came from the regions of the constellation Orion, which is why the Egyptian pyramids were also formation-wise constructed as image of this constellation, while the Sphinx structure was aligned to the constellation Leo. 
the found hieroglyphs, and the use of the pyramid chambers as grave sites, etc., traces back to the more recent times before Emmanuel, and specifically from around 2,000 years ago to the past of slightly more than 13,000 years. The subterraneous chambers, which were part of all pyramids, reached considerable proportions and created subsurface villages of various sizes, which were used by the human beings to get themselves to safety in the face of dangers looming from Earth or outer space. Contact Report 319 Recently I was working on an old contact report, and I came across the pyramids, in terms of how they were made, the how. On the one hand there was talk about human muscle power, and on the other hand there was talk about telekinetic powers playing a role. Both are correct, but we actually gave you an enlightening answer about that at earlier times. On the one hand, about 200,000 human beings were involved in the construction work with their physical strength and efforts. But on the other hand, there were also a few extraterrestrial humans, from the constellations of Orion and Leo, who had telekinetic powers and used them to a small extent in the construction of the pyramids. However, this telekinetic involvement of the extraterrestrials was really only small, even if it is emphasized. But this is only for the reason that it was based on consciousness and not on muscle power. The human beings who had to do the hardest physical work at the pyramid constructions were often prisoners and slaves, and many thousands died of complete exhaustion during the hard work. However, the miserably deceased were replaced again and again by new prisoners and new slaves, as well as by other laborers who had been brought in. In total, 40,738 human beings died during the construction of the pyramids and in the partly underground quarries where the large stone blocks were chiseled out. Contact Report 413 this is also interesting, but with time, more things will surely be found in connection with the pyramid construction. However, the finds will only move in more recent times, when the pyramids were partially renewed. For the likewise large construction periods before, which took place about 12,000 and also about 70,000 years ago, no more evidence will be found. Contact Report 625 Khafre, that is to say, Chef Chufu or Chefren is the Greek name for Chafre or Chayefre, which means Chayefre is big. He was the fourth pharaoh of the fourth dynasty in the old kingdom of Egypt. Pharaoh Chefren was the half-brother of his predecessor Rajadef and the half-brother of Kawab, and he was buried in Giza, as was his father, Pharaoh Cheops who was actually called Chufu. His reign lasted from 2567 to 2534, before Emmanuel, that is to say, before the Christian calendar. He was also the originator and responsible for the construction of the temple and twelve statues, which showed the hours of daytime by sunlight. In addition, he was also the originator and responsible for the construction of the second and second highest pyramid in Giza, as well as for numerous outstanding statues in the vicinity of the Sphinx, some of which have been preserved to this day. With regard to the construction of the Giza pyramids, however, it should be noted that the first pyramids were built around 73,300 years ago, but were later demolished again because they had deteriorated more and more due to the weather and the climatic influences. 2,800 years ago, they were then rebuilt, which was due to the initiative of a king raspy. Pharaoh Salak, who ordered the dismantling and modification of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Once again, the pyramids fell to decay because the weather conditions and the depletion of the pyramidal material had become so rampant in the course of the next millennia that about 4,500 years ago, when Cheops and Chephren dealt with the construction of the new pyramids, a complete rebuilding was necessary. Everything had to be torn away, reassembled, and thus rebuilt, 
whereby the large stone slabs were also carved out of the hard underground around the Sphinx and used to build the temple, the statues, and the pyramid. So new square stone blocks were cut and used to build the temple and the pyramid of Khafra. The Cheops pyramid was, of course, created under the direction of Pharaoh Cheops, who had it completely rebuilt and remodeled, while 73, 300 years ago it was traced back to partially non-terrestrial builders, when non-terrestrials from the constellation of Orion were present in ancient Egypt, participated in the construction of the first pyramids and set themselves up as gods. The Great Pyramid was together with the others already in the early days, and then also for the last recreation aligned on the Orion constellation. But the Sphinx, according to the guidelines of Chephren on the Leo constellation. Fee 500 years ago, the pyramids and the Sphinx were built solely by human beings of the Earth, whereas in the first construction, 73,300 years ago, non terrestrials were also involved, partly using telekinetic powers. Yes, you already told me this in the 1980s as well as that the actual Egyptians, who built the pyramids 4,500 years ago, were mostly free human beings and craftsmen, while only a small part of them had to work as slaves. The food for all the workers, who comprised a small army, was, so to speak, provided by a food city not far from the pyramid, as well as facilities with dormitories were given for the workers. Yes, that had been so. Contact Report 710 but what I still have to say with regard to the land of Egypt in early times, and thus long before antiquity and the time of the pharaohs, is the following. At that time the country looked completely different from what it does today, for on the one hand I can remember that the Nile had another large river branch to the left of its course, which flowed through a very large and long valley, whereby the Nile itself also ran much more westwards than is the case today. There was also a large city in the Great Valley, where I also saw long skulls. From the Nile and also from its tributary, far into the western land, there were countless pyramids of various sizes, as also everything was full of life, whereby also villages and cities were many huge palm forests, fertile gardens and fields, and so at that time everything looked completely different from today. There were also many animals in the vastness of the land and in the forests and vast green areas, such as antelopes, giraffes, elephants, lions, crocodiles, and all kinds of other animals and creatures, before the desert areas formed and these life forms moved away or died out. Over all the millennia, all the villages, cities and pyramids and the fertile gardens, fields and palm forests that at that time reached far into the western land, and as far as the Mediterranean Sea also disappeared. Most of what existed at that time has been buried meters deep under the desert sands advancing from the west over the last millennia. Now, in another large city than the one in the great valley of the Nile tributary, I could observe other long-headed as well as normal-headed people who were the actual rulers of the land of Kemet to which Svath explained to me that their early ancestors had been coming to earth for millennia probably for more than 75,000 years, when they also built the first great pyramids, which were then repeatedly dismantled and rebuilt in the course of time, which I could observe for myself through another journey into the past with Sfath. The last time this happened was around 5,000 years ago, but before that it was also 6,000 years ago, and more than 12,500 years ago. This also happened with the peoples in South America and Asia, where the long-skulled, the earth foreigners and the other earth foreigners, who were physically earth foreign, normal-skulled or small and big-headed and big-eyed, but also giants, as for example in South America, were also involved and had a culturally completely different influence on the earth peoples on all continents. As a result, different buildings, villages, cities, Cult objects and pyramids as well as sites with large menhirs were also created all over the world, such as Stonehenge in England, near Avesbury in Wiltshire, about 13 kilometers north of Salisbury, and in Armenia, the Stonehenge or megalithic fields in Zorakara, 
near the mighty mountain ranges of the Caucasus, whereby the techniques of the earth foreigners were used in transporting and erecting the megaliths, which weighed many tons. Under the direction of the long skulled villages, cities and pyramids were also built in early Egypt, as were also a few areas in Europe, where there were still huge forests at that time. Although the northern regions of the earth were for the long skulled and the other earth foreigners, such as the small, big headed, and big eyed, as well as for the normal headed, because, on the one hand, they preferred warmer climes and were therefore dependent on fertile land in warmer areas, as well as on many human beings whose help they needed as laborers and whom they could also dominate and rule. Contact Report 743 The huge area of Huetap alone and the great city of the same name, Huetap, which existed 3,500 years ago in what is now Honduras, was monstrous as far as I was concerned, whereby the Long Skulled also worked there and had a pyramid built, just as the Long Skulled did in Egypt, in the Balkans and in Asia, and so on. Contact Report 829 So, I think I may now speak openly and say that beings from the depths of the space of this universe visited the Earth before there were Earthlings. Since then, however, their descendants have come here again and again, creating many things for the human beings of the Earth in the last 390,000 years or so, which were often only achieved with hovering techniques. Especially what concerned the moving, setting up and stacking of building elements weighing tons, such as 10, 20, 30, 50 tons, or even heavier elements, was done by technology that made it possible to levitate the materials. In very few cases something was also moved telekinetically, but this was a real rarity. The processing of the heavy elements was usually done by machine, if one may say so, to what was just used. The machining was done such that the elements were so accurate to the hundredth or even thousandth of a millimeter that everything fitted together in such a manner that practically not even a hair could be pushed in between. This is precisely something that the clever earthlings of today, who deal with these things of the past in big words and knowing, cannot understand how everything really came about in this respect. Their wild fantasies of how it was and how it all came about are truly hilariously daft. Well, when the earthlings at a much later time, as a result of traditions, etc., worked hewed and chiseled stones, that was primitive again. But the fact is that the earthlings at that time did not have heavy machinery with which they could have done everything, and especially not with human power, as many archaeologists, etc., imaginatively spout, about and think up the most impossible constructions with which the human beings of earlier civilizations are supposed to have made the impossible possible and managed it. Also, with guidance and assistance, entire cities were built all over the earth, some of which, however, sank in the seas or in large lakes in later times as a result of natural phenomena, were overgrown by primeval forests, or others were covered by sand drifts. Contact Report 832 Now, also the thousands of languages of Earth humans, as well as the gods and their worship, and the religions and faiths arising from them, as well as the technologies by which many things were erected in ancient times which would have been impossible by human beings' powers, were therefore not created by Earth humans alone, but by the knowledge and the energy and the capabilities which were from outside the Earth. But you should mention that we Pleiaran and our very distant ancestors, who first came to Earth already 25 million years ago, were in no manner involved in these developments, just as we also never had anything to do with the foreigners, so they still today and never in the future will be able to contact us or fathom our presence. Contact Report 836 Therefore he or she, the earthling, the human being, also does not know that actually the alembracing being depends on swinging waves, as also on sounds resulting from them. The sun, as the authoritative celestial body of the system, orders the distance of planets away from it in its system area by means of swinging waves and sounds. 
something that is obviously not yet known to the great science of astronomy, because at least I have never heard of it. But it is the case, as I learned from Svath and was able to sense and hear through his apparatus, that every system satellite actually orbits around the sun with a very specific swinging wave, that is to say, vibration. This swinging wave also corresponds to a very specific wavelength as well as an impulse, which in turn produces a special sound. I could perceive that is to say feel and hear all this through Svath's equipment. And such swinging waves and sounds were also known and useful to the faraway travelers, who also used them in early times on Earth and produced monumental works with them. They were even able to move the heaviest things through the air with it, which I mentioned years ago when I mentioned something about the building of pyramids in Egypt. At that time, I simply used the term telekinesis to explain it, because it is possible through the powers of thought, which it actually was. But in this respect, it was used to handle everything in the manner that certain swinging waves were used in connection with sounds. So basically, I said at that time what is really true. But I did not explain that it was not a matter of mental teleportation in the actual sense, in order to transport the heavy cuboid blocks for the building of the pyramids, but precisely through a teleportation that was based on swinging waves and sounds, in other words, in a natural manner. If natural energy and power were used at that time to lift and levitate, then it was done in a different manner than through the actual application of thought power. And this was actually used at that time and even earlier for transport by those who had traveled far and wide, also for the precise production of the huge cuboid blocks, which today could not be moved even with huge machines and could not be produced so skillfully with all modern tools. Contact Report 849 Our ancestors were never involved in bringing any religions to Earth. Just as no buildings, etc., were created by them, as the earlier foreigners did on the other hand, and elevated themselves above Earth's humanity. Contact Report 864 Perhaps they, e, Earth foreigners, know, however, that the pyramids are many thousands of years older than Earthlings claim, but that is not really important. The fact that they were built in a different way than, for example, elsewhere whole villages and cities were built with correct bricks, which are still produced and used today, as they were 12,000 years ago and so on, that is a peculiarity, as is also the case with the giant stones, which not only weighed many tons, and some of which weighed well over 1-200 tons, and were cut to size with such millimeter precision, that not even a hair could be poked between them when they were put together. This should actually give the archaeologists pause for thought, but it doesn't, because unfortunately they don't want to know the truth, but indulge in fantasies, 